Uh, hello, hello. Uh, so today I'm going to quickly talk about JSON comparisons with Playwright, some of the default functionality built into it, and then a couple just tidbits about uh, other great sort of components of it. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben. I run Loop Software Testing Services. We provide uh, QA automation services to a whole variety of clients as well as uh, manual testing. Um, and so without further ado, let's jump into it. So. Um, what we're looking at here is a basic API call as a quick example. It's going to have a body uh, and then a response and then uh, a 201. If we go and we look in the function, all it's doing is it's basically using the to equal function um, to compare the two string values. And actually, the to equal function um, is remarkably fantastic when it comes to its ability to tell you the differences. So um, I've already ran this uh, function really quick here and I just will show you the example. So if we go back and we look at the Playwright report, um, sorry my dog snuck right in underneath the recording. There's two tests that are run. One is a, a valid message and one is I cannot post without a name so we're going to go and we're going to look in. And what we can see is that actually in the error message itself Playwright has called out the two differences in the JSON, which to me, I don't know about you, but I in the past have had a hell of a time trying to get two JSON strings just to be easily compared to each other. And Playwright makes it as simple as basically passing in the two strings and then saying that they should equal each other. And it looks at the whole string and it calls out the aspects of the string that were expected and the aspects of the string that received. So here you have it expected Ben 1, 2, 3, and it received Ben 4, 5, 6. That's as simple as can be. And it was mind blowing to me that we can feed in two JSON strings. In this case, you have the JSON string call response that is comes from the post response that is your post dot uh, response dot JSON. We put it into uh, a constant and then we basically call it and then we say it should equal the returns value. That's an argument. We're going to look at that as it comes in right here. In this case, example post two. Um, and then you have example response that it's comparing it against. And we, if we actually go look, we can see, okay, example response, Ben one, two, three, that's what it's expecting. And then if we go and we look at the, um, what we posted, you have example uh, post, and that's going to be Ben four, five, six. So of course they're not going to match, right? Um, so very, very easy, very, very straightforward. But if we are in a world where actually we don't want to necessarily flag that, and instead we want, um, let's just say any string, exactly. And instead we don't want it to say, hey, there's a difference. An example being like, let's say you get an ID back or something like that from the API. You know it's going to be a string, but you don't know what the string is going to be. This is where you can really expedite some of your comparison. So in this case, we have example dot any string. Anytime a string comes back, it's going to say it passes because it expects it. Um, but we can do example dot expect dot any, and then if we go and we look at it, you can say uh, number, and it'll do that. Um, you can actually just leave it as expect dot any. Um, but then if you go farther down the sort of ability to add these functions, um, if we do string, you can actually compare stuff like the length of the string. You can compare stuff like the count. Um, it, it basically allows you to say, let's say that you're going to, expect a nine digit um, ID coming back. You can do that directly within the JSON itself. You don't have to make its own expect function. And when you do that, it'll call out the differences just like it calls out the differences here where you have this expect out any built in. If it doesn't match one of those criteria, it'll um, call it out. But if we go and we rerun this by the way, and we just say, uh, let's just click up and let's run this again. Both of these will now be passing because rather than expecting something that's slightly different, it's expecting any string and it should if we're, oh, funny, now it's failing. Um, expected. Oh, I'm dumb. That's because I accidentally updated the post to that as opposed to the response. So if we go back and we, that's the post call, can't do that. We're gonna do the response call and we're gonna say uh, 
instead here we're going to take what's well, just this component and we'll say expect dot any string and run that again uh, just to sort of reiterate what I was doing um, it essentially I was feeding in a post call with a function as opposed to the response um, and now they both passed so uh, what we quickly covered is uh, how to compare JSON strings in, in Playwright. I'm an unbelievably huge fan of this. It's as simple as looking at uh, essentially two equal for two JSON strings. It compares the whole string. It'll call out the exact differences between the two, and it'll save you a ton of time. If you're trying to do like a for each loop or something like that to compare JSON strings, don't do that. This is This is significantly easier to do it this way. So talk soon. Appreciate it.